So question 60 says this. Imagine I have identity map in two-dimensional setting. So R2 is taken to the R2. Identity means that it's just the, the one which takes vectors to themselves. No alterations for any vector in R2. Imagine I have a standard basis in R2. That's my typical notation for the standard basis. We need to find the metrics of this identity map with respect to the standard basis, which is taken twice in the domain and the codomain. Nothing can be easier than this task that doesn't involve any computations at all. All I have to do, I have to follow the steps of finding the metrics of a linear map. These are my steps. First, I apply my identity map to first element of the basis, which is simply the first element of the basis. And I make the observation that uh, if I make these alterations, that will give me the representation of the first element of the basis as a linear combination of elements of the basis. So what I said a lot, but basically I said a very simple thing. Same story for the E2. When I apply identity to E2, it will be E2 again. And the representation of E2 as a linear combination of E1 is E2, and E2 is like this. If I take these coefficients as columns, if I take these coefficients as columns, that will be the matrix we're looking for, this matrix. And that is the identity matrix. This is something actually we use on Tuesday. I made this uh, remark that the identity, <coughs> the matrix of the identity map with respect to the standard basis is identity matrix. Here's the proof. Uh, the question 60 only discusses identity map in two-dimensional setting, but the same argument will work actually in any dimensions. Now, question 61, it shows that if you, if you alter the basis, if you take different bases here and different bases here, then even though you will be looking at the identity map, you no longer will be having the such a simple conclusion as before. Look at this. <coughs> Question 61 says, imagine I have a basis B like this. And uh, that will be the basis in the domain. And in the codomain, we take another basis, which the question calls C. It's these two vectors. So these are 1, 1, and 1, negative 1, 1, 3, and 1, 2. The question goes to ask, find the matrix of the same identity map, but this time with a different pair of bases, B and C. The steps will be the same, though this even though this time we will need to do some computations. Here's my steps. Uh, just to save uh, time and writing, let me just give names to this L, to these vectors. These, these two I will call V1 and V2, and these two I will call W1 and W2. So here's my computations. I mean, it's not the computation, it's the symbolic expressions yet. I have to apply my identity uh, to the first element of my B basis. This is easy step, it's just simply, oh, it's a typo. It's supposed to be V1 here, of course. And then I have to find these coefficients, which ensures that this V1, let me just fix that, Then I have to find these coefficients, which I, because we, we're all together with four coefficients, that's why I index them in, in such a way, A11 and A21, which represent V1 as a linear combination of W1, W2. The same story for V2. Identity applied to V2 is simply V2. And I will need these coefficients, yet unknown, which will give me V2 as a linear combination of W1, W2. The reason I index, I, I hope you understand the reason I index my coefficients like this, because when we find these coefficients, the, this set of coefficients in the first line will be the first column of my matrix. The second set of coefficients in the second line will be the second column of my matrix. That's a symbolic approach to things. And now, unlike this question, where we didn't need, where we didn't we didn't need any computations this time we will need some computations and here they are 
Uh, if you're looking for these two coefficients, effectively this is solving of system of linear equations with two unknowns, two equations with two unknowns, and we normally do this by, by extracting the augmented matrix of this system. For this system, the augmented matrix will be W1, W2 as a column on the left-hand side, and V1 as a column on the right-hand side, so it will be the matrix like this, again in symbolic form again, yet. And for this system, if you extract the augmented matrix, it will be the system like this. W1, W2 is the first two columns, and V, V2 is a column on the right-hand side. Each of these augmented matrices, they will, they, we will need to take them to the row echelon form, but we can do it in one go. Rather than doing this separately, we can build one large augmented matrix, like this. W1, W2 on the left-hand side, V1, V2 on the right-hand side, and then take this matrix to the row echelon form. So here's my computations now. Here's my matrix. Oh, I made a mistake, yeah, didn't I? I made a mistake uh, because you see what the mistake is? Oh, it's a funny mistake, I know. Uh, the mistake is that my matrices are, I put them in the wrong order. This is V1 vector, this is V2 vector, this is W1, and this is W2. So actually, it should be the other way around. Uh, I can fix that. I'll fix that in a second. Here's my new augment, that, that this is a correct augmented matrix. Oh, easy. Uh, so here's my W1, here's my W2, here's a V1, here's a V2. Uh, I have here pre-computed row echelon form to the reduced row. Of course, it's a wrong one, so I'll kill this, and I'll make now a new one. Uh, I, just, I just realized I need to kill this equal sign for, for the time being. Uh, I'll just do it like this. I'll put the equal sign on this side. <coughs> So I need to take this to the row echelon form. Uh, this thing can help me with that. We'll just go to the reduced row echelon form like this. That's the one which I'm going to keep. This is a reduced row echelon form. This is a reduced row echelon form. Now you don't have, of course, I mean, like, a <clears throat> I'm hiding the details, the computational details from you because it's irrelevant. Yeah, it is irrelevant. What's relevant is the actual reduced row echelon form. So look what happens. Look back at this augmented matrix. For this augmented matrix, the reduced row echelon form will be this, this left-hand side and this right-hand side. And for the second augmented matrix, the reduced row echelon form will be the same left-hand side but this right-hand side. When you have a matrix in the reduced row echelon form, the right-hand side is, in fact, is a solution. So this column, it is exactly the solution for the first system here, and this column is exactly the solution to the second system here. Because I need to take these solutions as columns anyway, this right-hand side is exactly the matrix we are looking for. So if I now take this augmented matrix and ask again for split it, I don't need the identity matrix. This right-hand side, this right-hand side, this is a matrix we're looking for. I killed the previous result. This right-hand side is the matrix of T with respect to the basis B and C. 